In this video, we're going to quickly revisit the four tails of a function. Pause the video and copy those down if you don't remember them. Here's a sample function to consider. The one thing that we can control in a function is the x value. Here I've put a little dot here for the x value. It can be some amount to the a negative amount to the left of the uh, y-axis or a positive amount to the right of the y-axis. The x value tells how far to the left or to the right we are. When you know the x value, you can find the y value on the function just by plugging that x value into the function. So here, the function value is positive. If we get over here, it's negative. At one point, it becomes zero possibly changes from negative to positive. Over here it's all still positive. The function is positive. The function now is zero and now the function value becomes negative and so on. Now we might be interested in finding this low point. This is a relative minimum. Notice that there's some particular choice of x so that the y value is, is low and all of the y values close to that are bigger than it. This is a relative minimum. Over here is a relative maximum. The, uh, there's some high point here so that all of the y values close, all of the x values close to that particular x value make the y value less than the one highest y value. We can also look at, at the derivative. The derivative tells the slope of the tangent line to the curve. So let's move our x along there. Here you can see that the slope of the tangent line is negative. There's a place right here at that high point that we were concerned about where the derivative is zero. Over here, the derivative is negative is positive over here. Here, the derivative is zero, and then the derivative is negative. So that's another way of identifying where this high point is. The high point will be a place where the derivative is zero. The derivative, the slope to the, to the left of that, the derivative to the left of that is positive, and the derivative to the right of that is negative. If we looked at this minimum value, the derivative again will be zero at that lowest point, and to the left of it, the derivative will be negative, and to the right of it, the derivative will be positive. We'll be coming down until we get to a level off point, then we'll be going up. That would be a minimum. A maximum will happen when you're going up until you get to the level off point and then you'll be going down. So the derivative can help us find these relative maximums and these relative minimums. The second derivative tells the concavity. Here's the idea with the concavity. You look at the tangent line and the curve is bending down from that tangent line. The concavity here is negative. So the concavity is negative all the way from there to there. Then there's a point right here. It's called an inflection point. That inflection point, it's a little hard to really pin down where it is, but somewhere right in here, notice to the left it's concave down and to the right it's concave up. The derivative at that point is the second derivative at this particular x value is going to be zero. As we move to the right, that derivative begins to be positive. You can kind of see that here the function is bending up uh, from the tangent line. So the der second derivative is positive in all of these places. Second derivative is still positive. Second derivative positive. There's some point here, the inflection point is hard to really pinpoint in the graph, but where the second derivative is zero, 
and then the second derivative is negative for all of these places. That means that if we can find a place where the first derivative is zero and the second derivative is negative, then we're going to be at a relative maximum. Secondly, if we can find a place where the first derivative is zero and the second derivative is positive, then we're going to be at a relative minimum. Okay, so there are three ways that we look to find these relative maximums and minimums. The first way was just to look at the function. If the function has some particular if there's a choice of x, it will make the function some value and all of the x's close to it make values that are bigger than that, then would be at a relative minimum. Similarly, if we could find an x value that would give a particular function value and all of the x values close to that give a, a function value that is less than that high point, then would be at a relative maximum. The second way was to look at derivatives, which becomes quite powerful. If we can find a place where the derivative is zero and that the derivative to the left of that is positive, that is we're going up until we level off and then we're going down, then we're going to have a relative maximum. If the derivative is negative and then finally becomes zero, and then becomes positive, will be at a relative minimum. Finally, the third way is to consider second derivatives. If we can find a place where the first derivative is zero and the second derivative is negative, then of necessity we would be at a relative maximum. Similarly, if we could find a place where the derivative See, the slope of the tangent line is zero, and the second derivative is positive, then would be at a relative minimum. So as we've revisited the four tails, we notice that the derivative and the second derivative can help us identify relative maximums and relative minimums.